Hi, my name is Sandra Odikoya and this is my testimony. Whew, 2020, wow, what a year. I believe it's fair to say that many of us never expected the year to turn out the way it did. I mean, a whole pandemic hit our nation and a lot of us went through or are currently going through a tough time in some way, shape or form. So here within the Ayo Awotono YouTube ministry, our mission is to wrap up this year, 2020, sharing testimonies from real life Christian women. Why? Because hope still exists and this ministry exists to point us all back to the Saviour and his name is Jesus. So with that said, let's carry on with this video. I'd like to start by saying thank you to Ayo for having me on your channel. It's great to be here and I pray by the Holy Spirit that anything I say today blesses somebody, that you're able to take something positive away from this and that if you're going through something similar, that it blesses you. So I wanted to share about a time early in my career when I was going through um, <laughs> many many challenges um many tests and trials and how by god's grace i found hope and came out of that season so um i remember early in my 20s um i'd completed my degree um i'd done my masters and i was ready to go into the world of work and just kill it smash it you know i remember around that time i used to watch um i used to watch this show i think it's still on actually this show called suits and um there was one character called jessica pearson in that show and i used to think that would be me which was like she had the best outfits all the time she used to wear the killer heels and i was like that's going to be me when i go into the world of work i will wear heels every day and i will kill it I wasn't even sure exactly what my career path would be, but I knew I was going to look good doing it. And reality hit me. <laughs> reality came to just, <laughs> just smacked me in the face. <laughs> so I just wanted to share a little bit about that, that journey and how God brought me out of that. Um, yeah, <laughs> so like I was saying, I finished my ed education, well, kind of main part of my education. I had my degree and my postgrad um, post degree and I was ready to enter the world of work. So I got into um, a small company, um, it was my first kind of real, you know, kind of real first job. Um, so I went into that company and I had all the excitement, all the expectation, all the, what's the word? <laughs> all the the drive and determination to make it you know make it count i was like yes i'm gonna i'm gonna do really well um and i i was particularly keen to do well in that job because after i, I had graduated from my masters i thought getting a job would be quick i was like yes they're gonna snap me up i'm gonna be hot cake in the industry and no it wasn't like that at all <laughs> I never expected it to be the way it was because I applied for so many jobs. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. I, I applied for so many jobs. And the sad thing was I wasn't even getting through to like interviews, you know, like my CV for some reason didn't, no one cared about my CV. Um, I would go through all these different, um, you know, do the psychometric tests and all that jazz. and. I just wasn't getting any responses. So even this job, when I got it, I was like, you know, it's not exactly what I wanted, but fine, <laughs> let's do it. So I started in this job and anyone who's worked for, you know, a really small company will tell you that when you work for a small company, um, the hours are mad because usually there aren't enough people, there aren't enough resources um, for you to just kind of go home at five you go home when the work is finished. And um, in that startup, the work was never finished. So I remember doing some crazy hours um, and just being so burnt out, exhausted at work, demotivated. And I was really struggling to, to even, what's the word, encourage myself, motivate myself. I was just over it. And 
I would pray about it and I'd be like, you know what? No, Sandra, keep pushing. Um, you know, you're meant to do everything as unto God. Don't give up, don't give up. But I got to a point where I really felt like, not even I felt like, I knew that this this job was affecting me mentally. I was really unhappy. Um, I was slowly kind of isolating myself from everyone around me um, because I just felt overworked and underappreciated. And I was just, I was just burnt out. I was done. So I handed in my resignation. And at the time I, I decided to hand in my resignation, it was because I had got to a point where I knew that I couldn't, I, I just couldn't do it anymore. Because I would wake up to get ready for work and I, I felt so much anxiety to leave the house and get on the tube. I felt, what's the, I don't know, what is it heart palpitations? Like my heart would be beating as I would be approaching the office. And it sounds so dramatic, but I felt literally like I was trapped. I felt, I felt just, whew, just like I couldn't escape it. And so I just knew I had to, I was just like, I don't care if I'm not working. I was just like, I just need to get out. And, you know, I prayed about it and everything. But even when I would pray about it, I still felt like I needed to leave. And the thing that was kind of, I guess, making me hesitant about leaving was that I didn't have anything lined up yet. The way the job was set up, the way my hours were set up, I didn't have time to apply for another job. I didn't actually have time to look for jobs, apply, hand in my CV, go for interviews. There was no time to do that. And even on the weekends, you know, sometimes I'd still be working. And when I wasn't working, I was thinking about work and I, I just had no energy to, to plan for anything else. So I just decided to, to hand my resignation in and I prayed about it. And, you know, I, I started to, to look at jobs that I could, you know, potentially apply for here and there. And nothing was really available at the time, but I still made the decision to, to hand in my resignation. So I did that. And after I handed in my resignation, I had to work out my notice period and I had to train the person that would replace me. So that was another few months of that process. Um, and, you know, just getting through those three months alone. Oh my gosh. I remember just feeling like I was hanging on by a thread and just constantly feeling stressed out. Like the, I, ju I just felt like there was no way I could make it to the next week, let alone work out my, my notice period. But I would pray and I started to focus on the fact that there was now an end in sight for that job. I, I was like, you know, just got, I literally had a countdown like okay eight more weeks seven more weeks six more weeks and that that kind of kept me going because I was just like I just need to get to the end of that that notice period so got got through that left the job and a massive weight was lifted off my shoulders but that's not even where the story begins because you would think that oh you left the job and then you found something else and that was fine no after I left after I left that company I was now unemployed I was still looking for work and I wasn't finding anything so I went from the stress of being overworked being in this job that you know I was just burnt out doing things doing doing um, work that I didn't like didn't enjoy um, to now be in a situation where okay I don't have that problem but now I'm not working I'm not um, finding a job and I don't know what's going to happen to me I literally <laughs> would sit at home going through application after application I did so many um, online interviews in-person interviews essays for different jobs I did um, those di I did more of those psychometric tests and even when I would pass them I still wouldn't get the job and so I was starting to wonder, like, what, what is this? I, I was really, I was really discouraged. And I would, I would honestly just sit at home wondering, like, I'm running out of money. 
my savings are just decreasing I don't know how I'm going to make it to the next month at this point what what do I do and then I remember I just <laughs> spoke to my sisters about this they prayed with me they encouraged me and then I sat down and I reflected on what had gone wrong and often I think sometimes when you have a testimony or when you hear testimonies it can come across as if oh I had this difficult challenge and then out of nowhere like a fairy godmother appeared and gave me an amazing job um what actually happened with me and I think this is I guess not your usual testimony is that I was still unemployed I still didn't have a job I, I still was applying but I had a moment where God actually convicted me to reflect on that experience of work and how I even got to that point and when I sat down and reflected I realized that the only reason I ended up in that situation as in the only reason I ended up going for that job was because one when I was finishing my postgraduate degree and or everyone on the program was applying for jobs etc people was were like staying up late applying for jobs and I was doing it very kind of haphazardly I would apply for jobs when I got time I was focused on other things outside of you know actually making sure that I had a job when we graduated I was you know still living my life so I, I wasn't focused enough on applying for a job and securing something I only really started to focus on applying for jobs after I graduated from my masters so that that's the first thing was that looking back on it I saw that I actually wasn't disciplined enough and I wasn't focused enough on getting a job the second thing was that when I did get that job I went into it excited to do well and everything but a part of me throughout that whole time I was at the job I felt like I had settled in a way I felt like I had ended up in a situation that I shouldn't have been in and it should have been different and that attitude I think just carried through the time that I was there because even outside of the work itself and the fact that I wasn't happy I was spending so much time thinking about where I should be so that even if there were some opportunities even if there were some good things in that job I would have missed it and I'm sure I, I missed some good things about that job because I was so focused on the fact that I shouldn't be there that when I was there I was just I was just trying to make sure that I survived the day basically um, so I didn't even look at the company as you know a place that I wanted to see thrive and do well I was kind of just like constantly seeing it as this thing that was weighing me down and if I had focused my mind more on the fact that I'm here I'm doing my job I'm giving it hundred percent I care about the company I'm here for a reason who knows where this will take me who knows what doors will be opened out of this opportunity you know I didn't have that mindset and for me when I reflect back the testimony is that moment the Holy Spirit took me through was hard and it was challenging because rather than give allowing me to have that you know excuse allow me to have that um, blame on the on the company on my manager on the team whatever the the reflection the the conviction was that I could have done better and it's always a hard pill to swallow because the testimony for me is that my situation did not change I still didn't have a job I still was unemployed I'd left the company it, it was still not a good experience but I changed in the way that I looked back on it and I changed in the way that I was able to reflect on the situation and the reason that's important is because since that time I've learnt to first look at me 
before I start to blame my situation or anyone else for my unhappiness, for my demotivation, for my lack of drive or you know, the fact that I'm, I'm struggling to get engaged at work, rather than it being about everyone else, Holy Spirit really convicted me that it was about me. And so my testimony coming out of that is when we go through certain situations, when we go through certain difficulties, we need to start with ourselves. And that's a very hard thing to do. And listen, we go through things sometimes, it's not our fault. Sometimes we end up in situations and you're just like, what? <laughs> I didn't do anything to deserve this. What happened? But at the end of the day, one thing I'm, I'm starting to understand more and more as I grow in my faith is that any challenge, any difficulty, things that I don't like, the things that are uncomfortable, the things that are stressful, all of those things I take to God and it's not just to say take this situation from me but it's to say God what do you want to do through me what do you want to do in me because of this situation what what is it you're trying to teach me and show me because of the situation and I think that change of heart is something that I will always be grateful for and it's a lesson that I learned at the time but I've learned it in different ways throughout my career. So my testimony it's it's not to say everything was smooth, it's not to say you know I had a, I had a tough time and suddenly everything became light and bright it's to say that even when things were hard you know when I I couldn't I couldn't even put petrol in the car <laughs> because I, I was tired of asking you know my family for money even through that it's like God was still working working it out for my good not in the sense that I suddenly got the job but in the sense that he transformed my mind to see the situation for for what it was, which was there was a pattern of behavior in me that led me to end up in that situation. And that same pattern of behavior meant that even when I could have been happier, even when I could have seen the positivity, I couldn't because I was still so bent on the fact that it was everyone else's fault. Um, and so that transformation is something that I am grateful for and for me it's a testimony and so eventually I did get a job I, I was unemployed for about six months before I found something I got a new job um, and that new job still was a struggle because it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do and it came with its own challenges and all of that um, but after I left that one I, I got another job and another job and you know I've been in this job I'm in now for over three years and that's amazing and that's a testimony but day by day I'm finding that that lesson I learned um gosh like seven eight years ago that lesson still applies today because when I'm at work and I'm having a difficult week or things are things are challenging I can remember and challenge myself to say, Sandra, are you going back to that old pattern of behavior? How how can you change your mindset? How can you think more positively about this situation? So that you don't revert back to a lesson that the Holy Spirit has already taught you. That's the conversation I, I have to have with myself. So for me, how I found hope out of a dark place was that I allowed the Holy Spirit to teach me a lesson that I wasn't willing to learn initially, that I was able to look back on the situation and not just look to the skies for some kind of miracle that would change everyone and everything except for me, but that actually God took me through that challenging time. He changed me and he's given me the grace to keep learning that lesson and keep applying that lesson that I've learned into new situations so that's my testimony was that I was going through a challenging time I was going through 
a, a dark place and I found hope because God in his infinite mercies didn't allow me to just fall into you know just fall into repeating the same patterns and doing the same things over again but he interrupted me and he stopped me dead in my tracks and allowed me to see that I needed to change if I wanted to see a difference in my life. I hope that blesses someone. Thank you.